Hello everybody, this is War Story Video Blog. I am Alex and here is Thomas Johnson. Hello Thomas. Hello, how are you Alex? Good to see you. Glad Good to you, see you too. Glad you came to the show. How was your show, Thomas? We had, we had a very good show, better than I expected, to tell you the truth, because there seems to be a little bit of a lull in collecting right now, at least in America, but the show was not in, indicative of that. The show was very successful for us, mm -hmm. very much so. And I see a lot of interesting items on your table and uh, some of unique items. Could you show and explain us uh, about some of them? Certainly. This is uh, a table of items that all belong to SA Chief Victor Lutzer. Is it all original? Yes, it is. It was all purchased by myself from his nephew. I'll show you a picture over here. This is a picture of myself with Carl Lutzi. Nephew, his nephew Carl, made in his house many years ago, 25, 30 years ago. And I bought this stuff over time. And he asked me to be sure, and as long as he was living, not to sell any of this. He didn't want it on the market. He just wanted to sell it to me to have in my personal collection. Mm -hmm. So what do we have? We, we'll just walk down and uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what we've got. Now this is a book that came from the family and it's a book of signatures, but it, it's a very special book because it gives the name, handwritten name, of everybody in the essay. And it's broken down by the different essay groups. And there's a total of over 90,000 signatures in this book. Mm -hmm. And being a military man, I really would have hated to have the mission of here, Lieutenant, take this book and go out and have everybody sign it. So all of the artwork in it, all of the artwork in it is original. Let's see if I can find a couple of pages here. Yeah. This is all hand drawn. This is Lutzi's home back during the Third Reich. This was the West Westfalen uh, group. A different group, but this got all of the groups all of the signatures and the lieutenant that had to complete this mission really had his work cut out for him. And that's a yeah. unique piece, one of a kind. It is, it is one of a kind. I think there's 90, 90 or 92,000 signatures. Uh, I should say here. No, it doesn't say here, but it, it's, it's, it's but you know. 90 or something over 90,000. And I was very glad to get this book. It, it, it is a one of a kind. And maybe um, some of uh, description essay daggers has names uh, yeah, from certainly. this book. Well, this was this has a signature of everybody who was in the essay at that time, and the the hinges on the book are solid silver. S.A. emblem, S.A. badge. This is a, a Third Reich picture of his group in his hometown. These are all pictures that the family had. Uh, the nephew, Carl, had two sons, very nice boys. Got to know them well, and they really had very little interest in their father's items. Because I asked Carl, why don't, why, don't you, why don't you give this stuff to your sons? And the son spoke up, one son, and said, you know, the students at school call us 
Nazis because of his relationship with the Third Reich. And they didn't want any of his stuff, which worked well for me because I did want it. I did want it. But anyway, these are family pictures. This is a film, same size film that's used in a commercial theater. And there's a lot of things I could do with that. People say you ought to have it put on PDV. The essay had this film made and given to the family. I, I personally never had the opportunity to view it, but they showed it in his hometown at a commercial theater. And it was a gift. It was a gift from the Third Reich, the very highest levels, to the, to the family. And it's a story of the the history of, of uh, let's see, okay. This is a very interesting item here. This is a, what's his private, private photo album. It belonged to he and his wife. Of his different travels, travels with Hitler. Probably the most well-known trip that he made was to Italy to see uh, Mussolini with Hitler along in tow. Mm. This, is, this is not Litzy's house. This is the um, Civic Building in Beavergren. I've, I've been to this town and their, their home several times. And in what year? Oh, I, I knew you would ask. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not good on dates, but a, a long time ago, decades ago. Probably in 60s or 70s or uh, 80s? Probably in the 70s, if mm -hmm. I had to guess. Okay, but I'm not, I really am not sure. Um, this is a young Victor Lutz. And this is, in, it, it was interesting picture with a private car. Yes, okay. yes. Th this is his uh, future wife. This is his grave site, which I've also visited. He was, he was buried outside of his home. Hometown, I should say, outside of his hometown. And uh, rumor has it that the Brits, the British at the end of the war, dug up his grave to find out if he had a dagger in the grave, if he had, and he did have some metal. No, really. I, I don't think he had a, a I don't think he had uh, a dagger in the grave, but he did have some of his metal, which they, of course, took. Very handsome young man. Okay. That's that. Now let's move over here. Here is. This is on one of their trips. I, th I think this is the trip to Italy, I think. And this is SA chain dagger here, we can see. Yes, indeed. Uh, that's that's Litz's. It's, it's better than an mm -hmm. SA chain dagger. He, he had a one of a kind chain dagger. And this is a uh, diplomatic or government official dagger here. Government official, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. That's interesting, very interesting photos here. Yeah. This, is a, this is a solid silver tray that uh, this is a little family press. And uh, this is a blown up picture. We can of, see of it on the, on the finger. Yes, and the, uh, in the original picture, which I have, this, this is quite clear, and you can see it's a, it's the same ring that he that he wore daily. Very interesting uh, ring, and yes, ring indeed. And I don't know if you got this or not, but the box, of course, is not original, but the ring definitely is. Mm -hmm. And strangely enough, Alexia, it's not solid silver. You would think. 
man of that statue, he'd have a, a silver ring, but I guess it was just a matter of getting the ring with his family crest on it, which is here. And I was very happy to get this. I, I didn't think when I first saw these items that he would sell them, and it took me several years getting them one or two pieces at a time to assemble all of this. And, and this, this album... This album is fantastic. This goes back to Victor's uh, trip to, to Italy to meet with General Russo, to and The Officer Degen here. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. yeah, we won't go through picture by picture. There's too many of them, but it's a fascinating, it's a fascinating photo album. He kept his wife with him throughout all the presentations. Oh, and this is uh, General uh, Italian Dagger. Uh, yeah. Correct, which uh, he was presented on this trip, by the way. Uh, this is where they met him at the airport. The Italian stood. Yeah. Some great pictures of Rome in here, which he wanted to see, and his wife both wanted to see. And then from there, they made a side trip to Venice, Italy. And here they are in Venice. It's, it's worth finding it a little bit cool. It looks like Venice, yeah. It is. It is. Yeah, I, I was there. <laughs> you know, I, I've been there several times. Yes, Venice, Italy, and. In the fall and in winter, it's quite cool there, so his, his wife's getting a scarf around her neck. I don't think I don't think there's an edge weapon shown here. Yes, it, it looks like Italian weapon. Italian one. Oh, the same. Yes. And here is Conor Dagger, or just the regular. This one. Looks like regular. Yeah. And here? With a white grip Italian rock. White, white grip Italian dagger. We, we really don't know what's on the blade of this piece or who, who owns this piece. I, I sold a very interesting Italian dagger with a presentation, not a presentation blade, but an etch blade to Rudy Angelo. Uh, a year or two ago at the show, and it, it could have been the one in this. And uh, w what year is it? Is uh, 1937? Before World War II? No, this this is, uh, yeah, this, you're correct. This is before World War II started. And they, these are the troops passing in review for both Lutzes. It's a very interesting album. Here's Mr. and Mrs. Lutze. Maybe. I'm not sure where that was taken. I'm not sure. But very interesting album. Yes, yes, that's true. This is one of the top, one of the top Italian generals, Russo, or you SSO. And. Speaking of General Russo, General Russo presented Lutze with this watch, which is and absolutely in beautiful. The description uh, on the back. Yes, on the back. Uh, Terry, could you hand me the watch? Yeah, just bring that out. Just hand it carefully, please. Uh, this is a, a present. A presento from uh, General Russo to Victor Lutz on his trip to, to Italy, made by the very well known uh, Bulgari firm. And here, this should have the dates. Let's see. 24th of January, 1940. I don't think it, I don't think it gives the year in Rome. He was presented with that watch. That's interesting. Yeah, and um, it's it's you know it's it's a one of a kind, and yeah. it, it I should point out 
it's got around the circumference. It, it's got um, sapphires, genuine sapphires, all the way all the way around the watch. Mm -hmm. Even even on the stem, even on the stem here, genuine sapphires. Beautiful watch. Yeah, very beautiful work. Yeah, it's and, very and a very expensive gift. But anyway, looks he got that when he went that time and now. Too. Yeah. Yes. It's very so interesting. That. I think that was the last thing that uh, they were willing to let me let me buy. This was his personal belt belt buckle. Is it signed? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. We can see stamp here. It is regular stamp. And this is just a tinny, a quite common SA tinny. Mm -hmm. But it was uh, worn on his uniform. That's interesting too. Yeah. Oh, in incredible group. It is. It, it yeah. is. And I've, I've honored their request not to price it for sale. Okay. That, that Carl said, uh, as long as I'm alive, I don't want to see any of this stuff being offered for sale. You keep it in your collection for as long as you like. But I don't want to see it being offered for sale. After I'm gone, it's a different story. You do what you like. No. If you want to sell it, then it's okay. Thank you for your explain. And uh, I would like to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Because you are a very famous uh, man, very famous collector uh, in Russia also. And um, a lot of collectors uh, read your books. And uh, that's very interesting. How long uh, you collect? I bought my I bought my first dagger in Germany in Munich in 1960. I was uh, graduating from the university, and I got a commission in the U.S. Army, second lieutenant, and uh, I was the brigade commander at our. Army detachment, and because I had the highest rank, they gave me the opportunity to pick what uh, what city or what country I wanted to go to. So I picked Germany, and uh, they said, "You, where would you like to go in Germany? If we've got troops there, we'll send you." And I said, "Well, I've heard wonderful things about the city of Munich." But why don't I pick Munich? No problem. We've got a lot of American troops in Munich. So I was not collecting daggers at that time. I was collecting coins. I was a big coin collector. Before that, I was a big stamp collector. Mm -hmm. U.S. stamps, not, not worldwide. There's too many stamps to collect worldwide stamps. But I was collecting U.S. stamps and U.S. coins. and. Um, There was a, an old German gentleman who used to come around the American facilities selling antique wall clocks, German wall clocks. That, these were made in the bike forest. They were handmade. And at that time, the dollar, our US dollar, was very strong against European currencies. And I found that I could buy an antique Black Forest handmade clock that sells today in America maybe for five or six hundred dollars or twenty or thirty dollars. So I bought a good number of clocks from this show. His name was uh, Richard Walther. And uh, I think everybody in my family has at least one German antique clock because they were so cheap. I, I, I wasn't buying them to resell them. I didn't resell them, but I bought them as gifts. Mm -hmm. Buying out them for Christmas and, and for birthdays and all. So one day I asked Herr Walther, I said, uh, Herr Walther, I guess since I'm in the military, I should be interested in military items. What's left over from the war? And 
and he said, oh, he said, I was in the Second World War. I was in the uh, Army. What are you looking for? And I, I was so naive to any of this stuff. I said, I don't know what's available. And he said, oh, a lot, a lot is available. And he said, there are a lot of people still living in Munich that survived the war that are friends of mine. And he said, you tell me what you're looking for, and I'll try to find it. I said, I don't know what to say I'm looking for, because I don't know. I mean, I know military equipment, but I don't know what would be a nice collectible. So the first time he came back to my quarters, I had an apartment in downtown in the city of Munich. And when he came back, he said, uh, if you walk out to the car, I'll show you what I brought from the second war. That's okay. So he got to his car, and he newspaper and unwraps it, and he has a uh, army dagger wrapped mm -hmm. up. And army dagger, it was first dagger on your collection. Mm -hmm. First, first dagger had the hangers, had the portipede, was made by Icorn, was perfect condition. Mm -hmm. And I said, boy, that's neat here, Walter. How much do you want for that? And he said, uh, I want 32, 32 German marks. Well, and, uh, how much it is in It was US 4 to 1 was the exchange rate. Hmm. So the first dagger I bought was. It was 1960. Divided by four. The first dagger I bought cost about eight dollars. And do, do, do you have it uh, on your collection? I, I, I did. Like I said, I kept it for a long time, and I meant to keep it. I meant to keep it until I ended up selling my collection. And somehow, somebody visiting my office took me out of selling it. I offered a very high price for it, and I did not recognize. I didn't have it tagged to where I could tell that that was the first dagger. So it, it's gone now. It's gone. And uh, the next time here, Walter came to my apartment, rings the doorbell, and uh, he says, I brought you another German dagger. And I said, I don't need another one. You brought one last time. And he said, oh, this doesn't look like the one I brought you last time. Don't you want to see it? And I said, yeah, sure, and it doesn't look like the other one. So we go to his car again, and he's got a second law blue fluffer dagger. And I said, this looks nothing like the other one. How much is it? And he said, same price, 32 marks, $8. And it, it also, by the way, had a nice set of hangers, had a nice porta pee, $8. So I bought it. The next time he came, same thing. I brought you another dagger. I said, I don't need another one. I've got, I've got two now. Why would I need another one? Oh, he said, it doesn't look like either one of those two. And I said, okay, let's look at it. So this time he brought me an SA dagger. And so this repeated itself several times. Always same price, always 32 marks. Didn't matter. He didn't know anything about models. Just 32 marks for a German dagger. And I said, gee, how many of these things are there? And he said, oh, each organization had their own dagger. There are a lot of different ones. Well, can you get some more different ones? And he said, yeah, no problem. And I said, uh, and they're all the same price? Yes, 32 marks. So I said, well, you, you keep bringing them as long as they're different from the ones that I've got. And so then I started looking for reference material, and there was none. And there was a little paperback, something, Riddle and Leslie, I think. But anyway, there was a little 30, 40 page paperback. And, and outside of the Zolian, where the daggers were made, factory catalogs. That was it. There was no reference book, no softbound book, no hardbound book. So I spent a lot of time trying to find original catalogs, 
I would take a reproduction catalog, but they weren't reproducing anything because there weren't, there weren't enough collectors looking for these things. But I could only find a few factory catalogs. Most of this paperwork was destroyed at the end of the war. So the first good book that came out was uh, Jim Atwood. Jim was, was a colonel in uh, Berlin, same time I was a, by that time, a lieutenant colonel in Munich. And I got a copy of his book, and it was, it was heaven to me because it was the first time that anybody really took the time to document any of these daggers. And he did a reasonably good job with what he had to work with. So Jim found out that I was in the Army, one, and two, that I was living in Munich. So he contacted me and said, we must get together. We, we like the same hobby, and uh, you've written on daggers. I've written, uh, no, at that time I had, but he said, uh, you like daggers, I like daggers. And he said, uh, we must get together. So anyway, long story short, he and his wife Inga became very good friends, so myself and my wife Tink, and, and uh, when we got back to the States, he lives in, uh, or did live, in Savannah, Georgia, so he invited us down to his house. We had a nice meal. We stayed overnight. We invited him to my house in Fredericksburg. He and his wife, who was a German lady, came up and spent the night with us. And we, we just had a wonderful friendship. And then, I, even with Jim's book, I still felt like everything hadn't been answered about German daggers, so I thought, I'll write my own book. In what year uh, you think, made first book on your series? I, I think 65. 65? I think so. Yeah, it, it's got the, the date in the front, but I think it was 65. Five, five years after you bought your first dagger? Pardon? Five years after... Um, the first dagger? Yeah, after the first dagger. Yeah. About, yeah, that's about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I really, I really wrote it as a command in General Staff College mm -hmm. in Fort Leavenworth, which I was going through. It's like a, it's like a uh, graduate school on a civilian level, but this was a military level school. And so I, I picked that as a project to do as my thesis was write a book we could write on any military subject. So. I got permission to write on German Dagger, so that's what I did. And I told my faculty advisor, whom I had served with at the Ranger Command in Vietnam, Colonel Burnett, Charles Burnett, very nice gentleman. Uh, I said, I really intend to have this published after I get out of the Army. Any problem with that? No problem at all. It's on a military subject. And I just wish you well with the book. Go for it. So I did, and I wrote the first book, and it sold and sold very well, very well. And so I had to make a big decision, and that was to either stay in the army and give up the daggers, or keep the daggers and write another book. And that's what I decided to do. And I, I've never regretted it. So after that, I wrote uh, seven more volumes. Mm -hmm. And then I had four, five volumes published by the uh, Schiffer publication. These, these are the large coffee table books. Yeah. It's bigger and it's uh, bigger. Yeah, most, most, mostly a picture book. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're mostly a picture book, not a lot of and text. You, and you? Okay, and then we can walk down if there's anywhere you want to stop. And uh, let me get let me get my stick. <laughs> Terry, you can start you can start putting all that stuff up that I've okay, <laughs> I messed up. Okay. There's nothing uh, too exciting here. Um, but we've we've taken all the daggers that we brought, and this, by the way, is only a fraction of the daggers that we've got in Johnson reference books. 
this is probably 30% of the daggers that we have with the other 70% back in my hometown of Fredericksburg. Mm -hmm. And we've got these divided by... Very good collection of uh, marine daggers. Yes. Yeah, we got. And I bought one special one, but uh, I already bring it to hotel. <laughs> okay, you bought you bought the best marine dagger I've ever owned. Yeah, it bought, was Puma. Okay, I have down at this end of the table arrangement. This this is a collection from England. It's a small collection, but the condition is superb. Uh, this gentleman passed away recently. And he had told his wife when he's gone that she should contact me to, to sell the collection, which she did. Uh, it's, it's in these two cases. And it's, it's thinner than it was because of the man who's videotaping this. He's bought several pieces. It's thinned down the collection, but there's still some nice pieces left. And um, I bought from this collection uh, one hunting uh, dagger. Hunting That's dagger you bought? Yeah. The best hunting dagger uh, on the Max show. Yeah, I, I, I think so. A beautiful hunting dagger. Yes, yes and the uh, Puma Navy dagger from this collection too. The Puma Navy was also out of his collection. Now, this gentleman was from England, but he always made the, uh, the Max show was a good friend of mine, and uh, he seldom ever missed the Max, and, and we miss having him here. He's a, a nice, nice fellow and a real gentleman. And how long he, how long he collected? Not, not too long. I knew him about, uh, I knew him probably 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. And you help uh, him to collect? Yes. Uh, I see SS with uh, blue in inside the chain, yeah. on the chain. A lot of these daggers came yeah. from me uh, long yes. ago. And, and at Mac shows. Some of, some of these were purchased at yeah. Mac shows. That's very interesting. Come and go. This is uh, a book that, that I helped write. I'm not the author, but I helped write on Jim Atwood. Most collectors and dealers know exactly who this gentleman is. He's the guy that kind of started the whole hobby mm -hmm. by moving into Zoligan when he was stationed in Berlin and buying out the factories of all of their parts and also the complete, the complete daggers that they had. Mm, that's very interesting too. We had last night at the Max show, the, the current ownership has decided to keep the practice of having a, a seminar alive. And, and last night, the speaker, Ken Alford, wrote the book on Jim Atwood and he gave the seminar last night. Mm -hmm. okay. These are the few swords that I brought. Swords we don't, we don't bring many because they, they don't sell so well at the max. They're, they're too hard for people to swept back to their home city or home country, so we bring very few swords. These are some of our supplies that, that we sell at Johnson Reference Books. And uh, semi-chrome, the best thing I've found by far to clean blades with. It's, it's a silver polish. Comes and from is the there, army. is there small cr scratches after that or? Uh, the, this will not cause scratches. No, as a matter of fact, if they're small enough, mm -hmm. thin enough scratches, it will remove some. And, and then these zipper cases, we've sold literally tens of thousands of these. I, I, a lot of cases with uh, your description uh, in a world because yeah. collectors uh, trade in selling in your cases yeah. uh, with, with your tags. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But this this has been a, a very big seller for us, uh, and I don't know. I think we probably sold 
probably 50, mm -hmm. 60, maybe 70,000 cases. Okay. Let's at least mention the parts. Uh -huh. uh, as, as mentioned in the seminar last night, the parts that Jim Atwood bought by the tens of thousands, most of them ended up with me because Jim and I were very good friends. And we'll be selling parts for the rest of my life and probably the rest of whoever takes my place at in the company's life, but we still have today thousands of parts. These are original parts. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is miniature parts, yes. Yeah, but this is just this is just a small fraction of the parts mm -hmm. that I've got. Okay, you want to sit down? And talk yeah. About and you also have uh, your small book. Yes. And. Um, we will make a present for our subscribers from you with uh, your description, with your autograph for War Story subscriber. And it's a good idea. And um, um, we, can, uh, we can ask our subscribers to write a uh, question for you. And most interest question uh, will uh, have this book. <laughs> That's okay. I'll, I'll be glad to answer any questions that they might have. Yes. And Th excuse me, this book I wrote that small so you could put pocket. it in your pocket and yeah. take it to shows. Yes, and it's uh, very informative too, and with uh, pictures, with and with the prices too. Yes. Maybe the value in, information. The yes, yeah. uh, information with prices may be not correct at the moment, but you can see. Value between relative prices. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, I hope we can uh, meet next time, maybe in your office, uh, or maybe next time at the show, and um, take a new video with uh, new items and maybe with new stories. I'll have a lot of new items at the next show, and uh, I'll be sure and show them to you because uh, you liked a lot of the ones that I brought this time, and you brought some very nice daggers for me. Thank you. Yeah. The <laughs> Navy dagger, I will repeat, the mm -hmm. Navy's, I've had a lot of, a lot of navies with presentations, with Damascus blades, but that, without a question, was my favorite. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank it, you very much for it, your explanation. It's my pleasure. Thank yes. you for coming to the show and uh, thank you for your business. Thank you for your business. I, I wish you I wish you well with your with your group. Your <laughs> Thank you. Okay.